Hey, 30 Minute Marketers, Gary Baker here with you. Today's video, we're gonna be doing a GrooveFunnels tutorial. We're gonna be inside of Groove pages, just like you see here on the screen. We're gonna be talking about buttons. We're gonna be talking about forms and how forms and buttons work together. So to do that, let's pop into GrooveFunnels and get started. So here we are inside of GrooveFunnels. Of course, if you don't already have your free account, link in the description, grab your free account to follow along. We're gonna pop into Groove pages. Here we are in our free account. Of course, we want more than three sites, so we need to upgrade to Pro. We're gonna pop into the editor here in Things for Sale. Then we're gonna go under Pages, and we're gonna pop here where we're looking at page three, which is the site that we saw when we started the video. So we're gonna focus here on this button and this form, this input form. So here's the issue. The button, first and foremost, check out the breadcrumbs, body block container, layout two by two container, button is separate from the form. So there's lots of confusion, especially in templates that are provided by Groove. These templates look nice, but they don't actually function. This button and this form aren't connected. And I'm gonna explain that as we get further on in the video, but for now, let's focus on the button and all the things that we can do with the button. So when you click on the button, it's gonna bring up the configuration dialog box along with the design. So the button is configured under configure. And of course you can change the text to whatever you want it to say. And then you can link to a page. That's another page inside of your site. You can link to a block, a block on this page, a URL, which would be an external URL. So an affiliate link or a pop-up. And a pop-up would be the pop-up you create over here on the left that says pop-ups. Of course, there's a video up here in the right-hand corner. I'll leave a card that shows you how to do pop-ups. So those are all the options. So you can see here that this button has no option for redirection or integration because it's not actually connected inside of a form. So now let's go and talk about forms and take a look at how those work. So again, here we are, we have the input field, check the breadcrumbs, body block container, layout two by two container input, and then we have a button. Go over to elements, you're gonna scroll down, and just to finish up on buttons, there are other types of buttons and you can drag those buttons over and look at them. Of course, this is a button with an icon. So if you click that, you're gonna have the ability to configure the icon and change that right there, as well as the icon size, icon alignment. But the link to options are the same. There is an annoying little bug here. Of course, again, I am on a MacBook Pro, so it's a small screen. So here you can't see the bottom option. So what you would need to do would you would have to zoom out. So here you would actually go to zoom, zoom out, until you can actually see the rest of the options right there. Now you'll be able to see the pop-up link. Again, this issue is because I'm on a small screen. It is a bug. They do know about it. They are working on it. I just wanted to show you that for completeness. We'll go ahead and reset that to 100%. That was the icon or the button icon button. We'll go back to elements, we'll scroll down, and we'll take a look at the text link button or text link option. And you can see right there, this is a text link, but it's a text link button. So if you click on that, you're gonna have the same configuration options here to link to none, page, block, URL, or pop-up. So those are your three button types. Now let's delete all those and focus in on the form, which is going to include a button, but it's a button that's connected inside of the form to actually work with the integrations, specifically for sending data to an autoresponder or to some other type of database for leads and information that you wanna collect from people when they land on your page. So to do this, we'll just go ahead and we will delete each one of these buttons just by confirming each one and deleting them to make sure that we have some space here to operate. And now we deleted those. Again, here is it input form, but we'll go ahead and we will drag a form button over and you're gonna see that these don't automatically connect. So you're gonna scroll down and you're going to find form right here. And what you're gonna see is a submit button. You're gonna drag this submit button over and you're gonna put it right there. Now you have a form submit and you have an input field, but the issue is the two aren't connected. So check out your breadcrumbs. Body block container, layout two by two container, form submit. Click on form submit, go under configure, 
you'll see you have action, submit or reset. But the issue is here, the container is not connected. So we'll go ahead and we'll delete this input field. And what we'll do now is we'll go back to elements and we'll scroll down until we get to form. And what you're gonna see here is an empty form. You're gonna drag that empty form over and you're gonna drop it in right there. Now you're gonna see in really light purple in this red box, this is an empty form container. Try dragging some form element onto it. So check out your breadcrumbs. Body, block, container, layout, two by two, container, form container. Your button, if you look at your breadcrumbs now, is in its own container. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some elements into this form container. So we're gonna go back to elements. We're gonna scroll down until we get back to form. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab an input field and we're gonna put an input field in our container. And now we're gonna drag our button up to be integrated together inside of that container. Of course, we can put that at the bottom, which is the traditional form. Now look at the breadcrumbs. Body block container, layout two by two container, form container, container form submit. So now when you highlight in red form container and you go over to form container, now you go under configure, you'll see integration or post and you'll have the ability to either integrate with Aweber or Zap Zapier or other integrations or you'll be able to post data and you'll be able to send that data to a form URL. So that is the option right there that you need when you want to connect your autoresponder or to send post data to a form from a form is under form and you need to build an empty form container. Then you can put in labels, input fields, text areas, checkbox, and the submit button, which is a button, but it's a button that is connected inside of a form or a form container. Again, check your breadcrumbs, body block container, layout two by two container, form container. Now, they do have built-in integrations to follow up on this under integrations. So for example, I'm integrated with Aweber, but you can see they have active campaign, get response, MailChimp. So at that point, what you can do is you can grab that integration, then you can drag that integration over and you can drop that integration in right there. And now what you have is an integration, which is an Aweber component. And under configure, you can see that now it's integrated with Aweber and it has the ability to pull your list or connect to your list, as well as do an automatic redirection to a page, a block, a URL, or a pop-up after someone subscribes or submits their name and their email that's integrated directly with Aweber. So again, it's a different form of button or a different type of button inside of a different type of form inside of Groove Pages. So again, go back to Elements, scroll down, take a look at this, understand the three different types of buttons and the button and what action the button takes when you configure the button and then understand that there's a form with a empty form or a form container and all the objects to include the submit button that you put inside of your empty form to connect that action inside of the container. And then if you scroll down, the final option is the integrations, which are forms that are integrated with autoresponders or other systems where you're actually going to have forms and a button to actually send that data with the API integration that's configured inside of GrooveFunnels. And that's what you have inside of Groove Pages right now for buttons and forms, as well as buttons and forms inside of integrations. If this video is helpful, give me a thumbs up. 30 minute timer right here. Click that timer, subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Just like the videos you see here, click those, keep watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.